What's up everyone? Welcome back to Fishing Hex. Today's video is a subscriber request. It's actually requested several times. I just uh, finally got around to making a video. It is a how-to guide to curing ink with hyposalinity. Now I've used this uh, several times and I've been very, very successful. The hippotangon here actually went through a 16 week period uh, between hypo and quarantine. Uh, and then she finally came out okay. And she's been in here for almost uh, what nine months now and haven't had any issues. So it does work and I've used it uh, on several other fish. It's just a little bit of a process and you have to be, uh, be patient, all right? And that's the key is being patient. Now, what is hyposalinity? Basically, it is lowering the salinity in a quarantine tank to, uh, there's a specific range, uh, 1.008 to 1.010. I like to keep mine in the middle at 1.009 specific gravity. Once you get your uh, salinity down to that level, basically, uh, to do that, you just remove a little bit of water every day and replace it with fresh RLDI water, and that will slowly bring the salinity down. Uh, so once you get to that point, uh, what I like to do is keep my fish at that level, uh, within that fluctuation range, for six weeks. Some people say you can do four, but I've always done it for six weeks and haven't had any issues yet. Now what happens is the ick parasite cannot reproduce during that time, so it will die off, and that is pretty much the only way that I personally like to kill ick off my fish. I'm not a fan of copper, I'm not a fan of any of that stuff because it's just very stressful and it's easily overdosed. So I just avoid that altogether, um, especially for clients. I like to just have them do hypo uh, because it's it's much easier. Topping off water is much easier than monitoring uh, how potent copper is in your system. Now, what you do is just go ahead and let your fish sit at that 1.009 for six weeks. Once you get to the six week period, this is the important part. You wanna raise the salinity up very, very slowly over a week to a week and a half period. Um, you wanna raise it back up to 1.025 or 1.026 or whatever you keep your reef tank at. And it's very, very important that you go slow because fish have a hard time adjusting to salinity rising opposed to it uh, you know, going down. So. Again, go very, very slow, and uh, once you get back to your original uh, salinity, 1.025, 26, whatever you keep your reef tank at, I like to keep my fish in quarantine for another four weeks, basically starting the quarantine period over. This gives you an, uh, gives you an idea, just in case, uh, for some reason, if it was to pop back up or another parasite or something like that was to pop up, you have another four weeks to observe um, how the fish is doing before you put them back in your tank. Like I said, that, that hippo tank came in, ended up getting ick, which was, you know, it's pretty obvious that it was going to happen. It's a hippo tang. It's very sensitive, uh, and it had a very, it was very stressed out when it got here. And then, uh, you know, I lowered her down to hyposalinity. She, uh, there was certain points where I didn't think she was going to make it. She was so covered in ick that it, she couldn't even see. It was that bad. Uh, she was in hyposalinity. Started getting better, and then, uh, you know, she spent another four weeks in uh, quarantine. So a total of 16 weeks. Uh, between uh, the whole process that she was in quarantine before I put her in the main display and it was worth it because she made it through it uh, She was very stressed out at the time, but um, now she's healthy happy. I'm trying to get her fat She is a picky eater for some reason, but I'm trying to get her to get a little fatness on her But other than that, she's doing very well and uh, you know, I she wouldn't be here if I didn't do hypo It's, it's guaranteed that she would have died uh, shortly after if I didn't do it now guys, this is, uh, this is just a general guide. Uh, some people will argue with me and say that they, you have to keep track of pH and you have to add buffers, all this stuff to your, your hyposalinity. And uh, personally, I've never done that. And I've done it with so many different species of fish. Um, I know there are some species that can't um, do well in hypo and you know, like the butterfly fish, I've heard that I've never put one in hypo, so I can't give you firsthand experience. I know that some species that are sensitive to salinity might not do well with hypo. So you might have to go the route with copper, um, but uh, I've never had to do that. So um, that's about it for this video, guys. It kind of gives you a general idea. I wouldn't worry about pH or anything like that. I never have, and everything worked out just fine. Uh, I think just keeping the salinity stable is the biggest key factor to um, getting it through the process. Now, uh, that's about it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the comment section below, or you can email me at fishofhex at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up at the uh, building of building a successful reef on Facebook. Now, guys, there's some stuff that I wanted to do. I'm thinking of maybe doing a live stream down the road. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do it, how I want it to be structured, or just doing a weekly Q&A. Basically, you guys do a lot of, uh, you know, put a lot of questions in the comment section, and then instead of me answering them in the comment section, I can just answer them uh, during the video. But I'll let you know. Uh, you know, I will reply to you and say, hey, I'll do this in a video. You know, one way or another, you'll get a reply from me. 
um, trying to just uh, go a couple routes, see what people want to do. I know there's a lot of people doing live streams. I just haven't decided if I want to go that route yet because um, there's a lot of things going around here. You know, I have my kids and I have all that stuff and, uh, you know, there's always something going on. So live stream might not be possible at this point, but maybe in the future. Uh, let me know what you guys want, uh, the Q&A or live stream, whatever. Just, you know, put in the comment section, give me your ideas. Um, also, in this video, I will have an annotation come up right now or somewhere around here. I basically let you guys vote on the 10 gallon uh, system that's attached to the main display. Uh, the two that were most popular were the Refugium slash Seahorse and the Anemone uh, with uh, Clownfish. Now if I end up going the Anemone with a Clownfish, I'm probably just going to do a whole new tank, a rimless uh, 20 gallon cube, something like that because I really want a taller tank for that and I found a pretty good deal on one so I might go that route I haven't decided yet but uh, those are the two ideas so that's gonna pop up you guys can just click and vote on what you want for that and uh, we'll get that process started all right guys so appreciate you watching the video like comment subscribe and as always I'll see you next time peace